Well, there's tons of containers. There's some around you. Can you think of any? Your clothes are a container. The cover on your book is a container. Your locker's a container. Your school's a container. Containers are everywhere. We have spent this entire unit talking about electricity, and we've already introduced one container, the battery. We're going to today introduce another container called a capacitor. Now a capacitor is a little device, it's a little container that stores electric charge. Unlike a water bottle that has to totally enclose its contents, a capacitor is designed differently. Both of them represent containers the capacitor, in fact, has to store electrical charge. So the question is, how do you get electrical charge to get onto those plates? Well, it takes a battery. But what's a battery? To answer that question, I have another visual demonstration of what's going to happen here, what's happening inside a battery. In this case, I have two flasks, both of which are filled with some water. Now between the flax, I have a siphon tube and it's already set up. Now I want you to, I want to ask you a few questions about this, just visually here. Why do you think that both of these fluids are at the same level? Well, for you to answer that question, you'd first have to observe that they are at the same level. So I tried to put in the exact same amount of water and you can see that they are indeed at the same level. Well, what happens? Why are they at the same level? To start to address that question, let's see what happens if we were to lift one. You can see that this flask's water raises and this one is lowering. So the water in the raised flask is moving from this flask over to this flask. Now, if I put it back down, it seems to go in the reverse direction. But when will it stop? When will the water stop flowing? Well, let's watch. It's almost there. It seems, in fact, that it's slowing down. So here it comes. Here it comes. It's starting to go really slowly now. But it seems to appear that they are approaching the exact same level. Why is that? The answer to that question is, only when they are at the same level do they have the same amount of gravitational potential energy. So if we define the tabletop as our zero level, you can see that this water, in the same shape, size, all these characteristics are, are the same, focusing on the water level alone here, you can see that this water is at the same height above the floor, or the zero level, as this water in this flask is. So they are at the same gravitational potential level. Another way to state that is, there is no difference between the gravitational potential level of this flask compared to this flask. Now when I raise this particular flask, you can see that this, relative to the zero level, is at a higher gravitational potential than this flask. And so the water is going from a high potential to a lower potential. And now this water is at the higher potential compared to this, and you can see that the process is reversing. And what's more is, when will it stop? It will stop when both vessels have the same amount of water in them, which is to say there is no more potential difference between the two flasks. Well, check this out. If I lift this up by just a little bit, I'll put it on a block of wood here, watch what happens to these two flasks. Now you can see the difference in level between the two is very small, so there's not a lot of gravitational potential difference between the two flasks. But nonetheless, there is a flow happening here so that the flasks achieve the same gravitational potential difference. You can see that the rate stops when the level of this fluid reaches the level uh, in this flask. So they both have the same amount of gravitational potential energy. There's a little bit more mass here but, than in here, but this is raised higher from a, is raised on the brick, and so those, those two gravitational potential energies are the same in both flasks. 
there is no difference between the two flasks and therefore there is no more flow of water. Well, this concept right here is exactly what happens inside a battery. So let's take a look at the guts of what, looks, what it looks like inside a battery. How does a battery provide an electrical potential difference? Now in the previous lesson, we focused on the fact that charge will only flow if there is a difference in potential. And what's more is charge will flow from a, a location of high electrical potential to a location of low electrical potential. Well, this battery then is to say that it provides a potential difference. There is a potential difference between this terminal and this terminal. Well, how does it provide or produce that potential difference? Because in answering that question, we can see that there is an electrical potential difference and that's what it takes to move charge onto those plates. So let's take a look inside a battery. 